In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But there was not much else. Indeed, God the Son and the Holy Spirit were the only beings in existence. However, God would not have it that way forever, and in the space of only a week, he created the entire universe. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> well, I'll be. Y'all are looking pretty good. Thanks. You there. Name that stuff. Okay. This has been a hectic week, and I need a nap, believe me. Wait. And one more thing. See that? Don't eat it. But the paradise he made would not last forever, as sin would soon enter into the world. Satan, a fallen angel who wanted to screw up God's perfect creation, decided to tempt Adam and Eve with the promise of godlike power. <laughs> Y'all should eat this, this no. apple. No, God told us not to. Yeah, God told us not to. But I think you should. <laughs> It's way better than that pre-workout y'all been on. Y'all broke my one house rule. There was one one rule, and you broke it! As for you... Oh! Her, her great, 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 great grandson is going to beat the ever-living snot F out of you in a few thousand years, so just think on that. Think about what you did. As for you two... Get out. Get out! Out. Goodbye. They had to hunt for their food because they can't eat from the trees in the Garden of Eden anymore. Get them! Get them! That is crazy out here. I'm... This world is full of all this hatred and evil. You know, in some ways, kind of like it, but... Oh! Oh my! Oh. Get him! Man, oh man, what a shame that this world is contaminated with the filth of sin. What a shame.
After God cleansed the world with the flood, he decided that it was time to begin on his great rescue plan. He selected Abraham, then named Abram, to be the father of the nation that he would use to save the world. Hey you! What's up? You see that land over there? That's Canaan. I want you to go there and start a great nation to save the world. But how can me and my wife, my wife Sarah, make a great nation if, if we can't have kids? That is a great point. However, I will, will give you a son, Abraham. Or actually, no, your name's Abram right okay. now. I forgot that. But don't worry, you're going to be Abraham in like a few months. Just foreshadowing. I'm going to give you a son, but don't you go around and try to make a son of your own. You got to gotta be faith. Got to have faith like Abraham. But you're okay. Abram right now, so you don't have faith like Abraham yet. But you will. Okay. And they're gonna, it's going to be like a saying that they're going to use a lot. Well... <laughs> Go on then, go, go to Canaan. It's like, I'd say two, 300 miles that way. <laughs> Easy, light work, to be honest. And so, Abraham began his journey to Canaan. And God did indeed give Abraham and Sarah a son, who they named Isaac. Isaac, in turn, had twins named Jacob and Esau. Esau was estranged, more or less, and Jacob was left to continue the bloodline alone. And continue he did. Jacob, now named Israel, had upwards of 15 kids and, moved, and then moved to Egypt to escape a famine. Jacob's descendants followed his example, and soon the Israelites outnumbered the Egyptians. The Israelites, who were feared by the Egyptians due to their ridiculous numbers, were put into slavery and stayed in slavery for 400 years. anything out there. Yeah. There is reliance. Um, excellent observation, sir. Indeed. What should we do with them? I honestly don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of them. If we tried to do anything with them, I mean, one of their kids threw a ball at me the other day. They'd probably get kind of, well, feisty. Mm. I was thinking we could peacefully force them out. It's wrong. Sir? We exterminate their children and put the rest in slavery. Spurred on by the actions of one tom fooling child, the Egyptians put the Israelites into slavery. Right. For 400 years, they tried to whittle down on God's people, and for 400 years, God's people prayed for deliverance. Until one day... Hey, 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 hey. Come on, you can't... You can't hurt people like that. That's not nice at all. No, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna stop you. This is my job. No, dude, you gotta be nice to people. Why? You're adopted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that! Oh. Moses! Oh, oh. My son. God. Rise, for you have been chosen to free my people from the slavery and bondage of Egypt. The bush, I've never seen a bush on fire before. Fire, fire, fire. This bush is on fire. What do you, what do you want me to do? You must go to Pharaoh and tell him to let mine people go. Oh, oh God, God, I, I'm slow of speech. Father, I don't know if I can do this. Please, please, just send someone else, please. Worry not, my son. My Holy Spirit will work through. I will give you the faith to carry on and to believe me no matter what. Okay. There will be much tribulation, but fear not, for I will be with you always. Father, can you just give me a sign, please? I mean, I set the bush on fire, but... You know what? Drop your stick. 
Okay. Yes. Ah! Ah! As you can see, ah! it is a snake. Ah! Now, pick it up. Ah. Ah! Oh. Now go, and let my people go. Yes, yes, fire. What do you want, you peasant? Listen, Pharaoh. God said, let my people go. No. Well, listen. God, what do I, what do, I do now? I'm going to send a bunch of fillies to bite them. Please. Oh. I'll let them go. I'll let them go. All right. Let them go. Psych, I won't let them go. God, what do I do? Ah, oh, hail. Listen, Pharaoh, God's gonna send hail. I'm going yeah. to send hail. Oh, you gonna let God's people go? Yeah, I think I will. But I'm not. <laughs> God, what do I do? Don't worry, I got this. How about now? You gonna let my people go now? I will let your people go now. Okay, Moses, thanks. Take your people and leave. Oh, by the way, your son is dead. All right, Moses, let's go. Israel was not a very good visual learner, and despite God's grace towards them, they eventually crossed the line one too many times. God allowed Israel, now whittled down to just two tribes, to be conquered by the Babylonians for 70 years. After 70 years of waiting, the Israelites returned to their homeland, but then God was silent for another 400 more years until the next stage of his rescue plan. It was now time to fulfill his millennium's old promise. The second Adam's time had come. Sir, sir, sir. Ah. Ah. Sarah, who is that? It's all. But are you alright? Uh, no, Sarah. I'm blind. I've been blind since my birth. Please, just leave me alone. Please. My my rabbit has leprosy. Please, just just leave me alone. Jesus went about doing his father's work by restoring God's church by doing lots of miracles and interpreting the scripture through parables. He amassed a huge following and created a church that spread like wildfire. The parables he penned so many years ago are simple to understand, but convey deep meaning and teach God's word wonderfully. However, that was only the first stage of his plan. After living on earth for 30 years, Jesus fulfilled the final stage of God's rescue plan and died on the cross for the sons of humanity. Jesus' death and resurrection reversed the effects of the fall and now we can enjoy eternal life with him after our time on earth comes to an end. One day, God will make a new heaven and a new earth, one without sin, where we will glorify and enjoy God forever. Now that Jesus has died, resurrected, and gone to heaven, we Christians have the same purpose as Jesus did all those years ago. We are called to continue his work by establishing God's kingdom on earth, and are to spread Christ's love by exhibiting it in our day-to-day -day lives. In other words, God's love must be contagious through us. We aren't alone, however. As humans, we could never really spread the church by ourselves. God knew this and empowered us with his Holy Spirit. Since God gave us the Holy Spirit at the Pentecost, the church has grown exponentially. One day, Christ will return to claim the church as his bride and to call his children home. That is the grand finale of God's rescue plan finally destroying sin and death once and for all. We are all technically dead in our sins, but when Jesus comes again, we too will resurrect. We will rise from the dead, so to speak, and sin will be banished forevermore. God will create a new heaven and a new earth, and we will all live in holy communion with God for eternity.